Hello, I'm Richard Van Wahey with EV for You Custom Conversions. This is the third episode in a series on how to convert uh, your gasoline car to electric. Um, in this episode, we're going to discuss a little bit about motors and adapters and why we use a particular motor that we do on, um, on this particular conversion. Uh, we are documenting a conversion process um, just for folks' general information. But uh, mostly it's going to be centered around the conversion of a 1974 Volkswagen Carmen Ghia, uh, which is behind me. And so in this episode, we're going to deal with some particulars in that vehicle. And one is the motor choice. Uh, most of the conversions we do use the Warp 9 net gain motor. It's a nine and a quarter inch motor. And uh, for applications, 3,000 pounds, 3,500 pounds and under, it's our motor of choice. But with the Volkswagen conversions, we use a different motor and that's the Impulse 9. And these two motors are, are very, very similar. They're both a nine and a quarter inch diameter motor. The biggest difference being the length. And uh, because of engine compartment restrictions on the bugs and same in the Carmen Ghia, we use the Impulse 9 because of the shorter length. As I'll show you in a bit, the, the specs on the two motors are very similar. Uh, not a whole lot of difference in performance. And uh, so the Impulse 9 is, is, is an excellent motor. It's far better than the 8-inch, which would also fit in the uh, Volkswagen engine compartment. So it gives you better performance uh, than an 8-inch would. A lot of similar performance characters to the 9 inch but in a package that fits. So let's let's discuss some of those differences before we move on to the adapter. The, the, the biggest difference like I said is the length but we'll go over a couple of the other things. And so here we have the impulse and warp side by side. They're both a 9 and a quarter inch motor. So the biggest difference is the length. The Impulse 9 is 13 and a half inches. The Warp 9 is 16 inches. And as we'll show you in a bit, that's enough to where you have to cut sheet metal uh, in order to get it to fit. And we choose not to cut the sheet metal. Um, and in cutting the sheet metal, you also affect the latching set up for the deck lid and so forth. So not an option that we like. Uh, another difference uh, is the weight. The Impulse 9 is 129 pounds approximately and the Warp 9 is 156 pounds. Uh, fair difference in, in, in weight uh, for just, uh, you know, two and a half inches. Um, the horsepower, 76.7 versus 28.8. Now, a few little differences there. Um, one, they achieve it at a slightly different RPM range, which I didn't write down. Um, but it's also at a different current draw. Uh, 115 amp difference. So this is putting out more horsepower at 115 amps uh, more current draw than the uh, the warp nine, and that's another difference in them. There's a there's a there's a about a four percent difference in efficiency between the two. So both of these uh, are, are specs are at 72 volts is what NetGain uh, does all their testing at. So 36.7 horsepower, 72 volts, and 450 amps for the Impulse nine, 28.8 at 335 amps for the Warp 9. Um, 
again, the torque curves are a little bit different. The torque on the uh, um, Impulse 9 is 60 foot-pounds of torque and uh, 70 foot-pounds for the Warp 9. And, uh, you know, that's at 72 volts. And, uh, and I believe the same amps, so I'd have to look at the chart again. They're both a 555 or 5,500 RPM motor. And the other difference is um, the MSRP, which is 1675 for the Impulse 9 and 1875 for the Warp 9. So it's a $200 uh, in increase in price or a difference in price. So when you're considering the big picture, you have motor specs that aren't too far apart. Um, it really comes down, you know, the price isn't that much of a difference. It comes down to whether or not you want to cut sheet metal on your vehicle or not and have to redesign the latch for the deck lid. We chose to keep the classics unadulterated and uh, go with the motor that fit the engine bay and didn't require us to do any other modifications. Um, also of note, since this is uh, the first part of November 2011, on uh, January 1st, 2012, net gain will have a price increase across the board of $75 per unit. So both of these motors will be going up $75 MSRP after the first of the year. Okay, what else we have here uh, is an adapter. This is pretty much just a two-piece adapter. It, uh, this is the, uh, the mating side to the bell housing, to the transaxle. And uh, it's 25 pounds worth the aluminum here. It's 6061 uh, T6 aluminum with a coupler, one piece coupler uh, that rides in a couple of bearings um, and so this is uh, mimicking the crankshaft on the stock bug so your stock flywheel will mate directly to that and of course fastens with uh, with the single bolt uh, which has the um, pilot bearing built into it. And then this, like I said, it just a, replicates the back end of the engine case on the bug, and, uh, or the VW engine, and uh, bolts directly to the transaxle. The other side, this one's designed for um, the Warp 9. This is actually uh, going to be used with an AC motor that uh, has uh, all the same mounting specs, shaft and everything as the Warp 9, but it uh, is shorter than the Warp 9 and will fit just like the Impulse 9 does. It's a uh, AC50 setup. So this side is designed to mount directly to the, uh, the motor. You simply insert the, uh, the key, the shaft key, and then this just slides on the shaft. There's a recessed area for the relief here, so it's pretty much self-centering. They slide right on. You bolt it in place. It comes with the studs and nuts and lock washers and away you go. So you can see it's a, a fairly compact, nice little adapter. This is one of two types that we normally use. Uh, the other type is actually 
uh, comprised of four components, of which we'll show you some pictures. I don't happen to have one uh, sitting around right now. But uh, it consists of a spacer ring that bolts to the end of the motor and gives you your proper uh, distance due to your coupler and, uh, and so that you have the proper clearance for your flywheel. And then the other piece is the adapter piece, which would mimic, again, this, whatever is needed to uh, match the bell housing. And then the coupler. And the coupler is a taper lock coupler, two-piece unit. And uh, the big difference, and the reason why we're sending a customer this one, is that all he has to do is bolt it on. The others require you to um, put the coupler on loosely, attach the flywheel, set an end play uh, setting, and slightly torque it down, uh, recheck your setting, and then uh, continue to torque it down to spec. And uh, so it takes a little bit of um, care to make sure you get adjusted. We typically sell a, uh, a package where it's the impulse for the Volkswagen. Um, it's the impulse 9 motor with the adapter, coupler, flywheel, and clutch all balanced, all set to spec, mounted and ready to go. And uh, whereas this customer is providing his own motor and uh, was only uh, getting the uh, coupler and adapter from us, we went with this design so that it would be very easy for him and, uh, and about the same price. So now we'll take a close-up view of the motor installed to show you what we're talking about as well as uh, a couple other things. So uh, let's take a look at the engine bay. Okay. Here's the engine bay for a VW Beetle with the Impulse 9 installed. So you can see our uh, standard uh, adapter in place here. Here's your spacer ring right here. And then this is a, a separate piece, uh, the adapter right here, um, that then mates to the transaxle. And uh, then we use a taper lock coupler, light and flywheel, heavy duty clutch. Here's the clearance between the back of the engine compartment and the, uh, the um, motor. Uh, well, it's about three finger width. Um, don't have a ruler with me right at the moment. But when you're trying to clear the splines on the uh, input shaft to the transaxle you don't have enough clearance and these motors or the the warp 9 they typically cut the sheet metal here and as you can see this is the latch catch for the uh, deck lid that's the other end uh, earlier Volkswagens uh, use a different latch that's even more complicated than this one. And uh, so by having to remove that sheet metal, you have a problem. Uh, also, some people will, will use uh, a double-ended shaft. We do not. And uh, although if you, you, you know, wanted to run something off there, uh, you could use a short shaft, not full length, and, and still get away with uh, some attachments. But this is the way that we prefer to do it. Gives you the, the clearance, allows you to have the uh, vehicle without being uh, cut and adulterated. And um, that's our... Uh, engine bay, motor bay in this case.
another look at the specs here. For additional information, you could contact us. And uh, contact would be info at ev4unow.com. Or you can go on NetGain's website. I believe it's goev.com and uh, get all the specs for all their products. So there you have it. A little bit of a close up here on the adapter. And uh, nice clean setup.